Okay, let me first introduce, uh, my name is Sheriff Steve Berry, I'm the Sheriff of Summit County. Uh, to my left is uh, Margaret Scott, Good morning, everyone. and I apologize, I know you're one of the uh, Chief Criminal uh, Assistant Chief. Prosecutors. Chief of the Criminal Division for the yeah. Summit County Prosecutor, Sherry Beverly Walsh. And to my right is the Summit County Medical Examiner, Dr. Lisa Cole. Hello. Uh, we had a tragedy in Summit County a few nights ago, as most of you are already aware. And a senseless, what we would like to classify, I guess, or at least I would like to classify as a senseless tragedy of the death of a 16-year-old. Um, while it is a senseless tragedy, the circumstances we have uncovered and the evidence and probable cause and the facts of the case so far, at least, uh, turns my stomach. What happened was on April the 6th at approximately 1854 hours, um, Summit County Sheriff's Office received a 911 emergency call from the Super 8 Motel at 1605 Corporal Woods Parkway in the city of Green for an unresponsive 16-year-old in the motel room. Uh, our deputies were there within one minute and found a 16-year-old person uh, identified as 16-year-old Andrew Fry uh, laying face down on a chair master bedroom in the suite. Uh, present in the room were his mother and a friend of the mother's. Uh, the City of Green Fire was summoned right away. Uh, we appreciate their assistance. Uh, however, they arrived and uh, it was quite apparent that Andrew had been uh, deceased for some time. There was nothing they could do. Uh, various items of drug paraphernalia were observed in plain view by the deputies at scene due to this our crime scene investigation, our detective bureau, the sheriff's office detective bureau, uh, and our specialized units responded for processing as well as interviews. And we conducted an investigation over the last approximately, uh, now approximately 48 hours. Um, through this investigation, and I want to thank uh, detectives uh, Jason Klein, Larry Brown, and Scott Plymire, the lead detectives for the sheriff's office on this case. Um, Several arrests have now been made because we have a reason to believe that this young man uh, passed away due to a drug overdose. And uh, it, from all appearances and from the probable cause we have obtained through the investigation, it appears that his mother, uh, her friend, his grandmother, uh, and a friend of the grandmother's all had a hand in obtaining and disseminating heroin amongst themselves. Um, at this point in time, we uh, have completed a search warrant this morning uh, in the city of Akron and it simultaneously uh, made four arrests. And I want to thank the Summit County Prosecutor's Office, the Summit County Medical Examiner's Office uh, for their assistance in this investigation. They've been with us since the beginning, once this was determined uh, what we had. Uh, I want to thank the uh, Northern Ohio Violent Fugitive Task Force. They assisted us this morning in uh, making the arrests so we could do it simultaneously at several locations. At this point in time, uh, we have charged the mother of Andrew, Heather Fry, with one count of involuntary manslaughter, one count of endangering children, and one count of tampering with evidence. The grandmother of the deceased, identified as Brenda Fry, has been charged with involuntary manslaughter, corrupting another with drugs, and trafficking in drugs being heroin. Uh, the other young lady that was in the room, the adult in the room with the mother, was identified as Jessica Irons. She's been charged with tampering with evidence and possession of drugs being heroin. And within the city of Akron, a man identified as Donald Callahan uh, with one count of possession of drugs being heroin uh, from the search warrant and the findings today. Um, at this point in time, I would ask uh, Dr. Kohler um, to explain what uh, the preliminary information the ME's office has discovered. We completed the examination yesterday of Andrew, and there was definite evidence of intravenous drug use, 
we were able to run a preliminary screen on the um, body fluids and found that he was positive for both heroin and fentanyl. The heroin has been confirmed as well. The fentanyl is still a preliminary uh, amount or preliminary finding. Two four charges were filed. Uh, we obviously, uh, my detectives met with representatives of the Summit County Prosecutor's Office, uh, Ms. Scott, uh, Assistant Prosecutor Brian LaPrenzi, uh, the other Chief uh, Brad Gessner, they've been very, very helpful. Uh, they are the ones who decided with our detectives due to our probable cause and evidence we obtained uh, what the charges would be. So if you have any questions about that, I would refer to Ms. Scott. Actually, I'd like to ask a medical examiner. Uh, again, from I know that sometimes it takes a good bit of time to get toxicology tests, and so how did you determine a positive uh, for uh, heroin and fentanyl? The screening was done in the morning because of the number of overdoses we're seeing right now. Our toxicologist has been running the screens most mornings because that's what we need. He was able to get enough other cases that had screened positive for heroin that he had a batch running for confirmation yesterday afternoon. So he was able to confirm that the heroin was present in the blood and we will be running the fentanyl, the fentanyl follow up testing in the very near future. So, I don't know, maybe Sheriff, I don't know if somebody else can answer this, but is, is this, are these two separate drugs? Is fentanyl something that uh, the heroin may have been laced with? Is this, is, what, is, what are you seeing out on the streets with this drug, these drugs? This is what is commonly referred to as one of the components that you mix with the heroin uh, to cut it with or to add with it uh, before you inject it. Usually. The, the fentanyl is a separate narcotic pain reliever. It's being produced illicitly in the community. Many of the cases that are coming to us as a heroin overdose at first blush turn out to either be completely fentanyl or a mix of heroin and fentanyl. And, and is this, does that make this concoction more lethal? Yes, the fentanyl is much stronger than the heroin. Sheriff, can I ask you a quick question? When you were talking and saying that it's a travesty, you seem to be getting a little choked up, almost, talking about the death of this 16-year-old boy. You're talking about a death of a 16-year-old boy who was in the accompaniment. And from all appearances, from all evidence, and all probable cause, we have determined to do the investigation. Uh, for lack of a better term, uh, was uh, assisted with obtaining the product by family members who are supposed to be the ones who protect their children and grandchildren. So yes, ma'am, it does. Uh, these are the type of things you want to see. Um, you know, we talk about generations uh, of domestic violence cycles, domestic or sexual assault cycles, uh, generation to generation within families. Um, now we are seeing due to this, we've seen it before, but now it's becoming more prevalent with the heroin usage. Uh, we're seeing it, uh, generational cycles of drug abuse and drug usage. And, and said we, we, we have a senseless death of a 16 year old um, and it, it was enabled that's the word I guess I was looking for uh, enabled by family members some people sure. would look at uh, his mom's past drug use and criminal history his grandma's past drug use and criminal history and say did Andrew ever have a chance I think that statement says it all right there and I think uh, obviously addiction is a terrible thing so what is what is uh, Authority and drug prevention going to do to reduce this because you keep expanding and going over and over. The I think there's a lot of components. I think it, it, it starts very honestly. Um, we talk amongst uh, the different, not only county, but uh, officials in law enforcement and your prosecutor's offices, your ME's offices. Um, there are several components, and I think the first one is a, a stable family. Uh, base and, and a lot of people do not have that and that leads to down a path of not a very good education um, Not a very stable family home or place to go to for your safety 
and things of this nature. So when you talk about that, I think it all starts, uh, we have a base, uh, and if you don't have that base uh, of a good family foundation, um, I think you're already starting behind the eight ball, for lack of a better term. Sheriff, uh, from actually from the medical examiner's preliminary report, which most of us had a chance to see yesterday, it looked as though the detectives um, were told that, and this has been reported, that uh, the um, the boy had to go or did go to a bathroom uh, to use uh, a syringe because mother didn't, uh, mother objected to him doing that in her presence. Can you? Can you say anything to that? Detective Klein, can you help me with that? Yes and no. Uh, she stated she wanted to be the, she didn't have custody. She had, never had custody. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be, quote unquote, the fun weekend mom. The mom, sorry, the what? She wanted to be, quote unquote, the fun weekend mom. So, in her head, if I see you take the drugs in there, I'm objecting to it, which is what happened. Now she, sorry, she watches him take it and goes in there. She's high on the couch. She doesn't doesn't try to stop him. There was drugs in her head. That, she, that is her not allowing him to do it. We have evidence of drug <clears throat> usage by more than one person in that room, more than one relative of the deceased. Now, with this problem, it's just growing out of control all over. It's not one community. It's not one demographic. Right. It's everywhere. I mean, the things like this, you know, a family party where, you know, the son, the grandson dies. I mean, is this a surprise to you with this, the way this is growing? I would love to be able to say yes. I came in anymore. Not with the prevalence of uh, not only heroin, but other illicit narcotics being used in the deaths we're seeing. Um, these folks deal with as well as myself every day. Well, uh, Margaret, you, you made the trip. Let's, uh, I'd like to hear from you about these particular charges. Uh, sure. Involuntary Just manslaughter. Uh, tell me about involuntary manslaughter and um, wh why that charge, why not something uh, more serious. Go ahead. Um, our office has been working very closely with Sheriff Barry and Dr. Kohler, the medical examiner's office. And um, we discussed and reviewed the case. And involuntary manslaughter is for the fact that during the course of a felony, a death was caused. So in, in dealing drugs or providing drugs or corrupting another with drugs, heroin, fentanyl, um, somebody died. So that's where you get the involuntary manslaughter charge. Does it change the equation at all if one of if, 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 if the providers are, are guardians or parents or relatives? It does because you have that uh, added dynamic of it being a family member. You look at perhaps um, maybe is, was there any type of child endangering? You look at the duty of care. So it can. We look at these cases on a case-by-case -case basis and certainly where you see family members involved and like Sheriff Barry said, unfortunately this isn't unusual. This is a horrible tragedy because of the age um, that we saw today, but it is not unusual to see family members, unfortunately, procuring and giving the heroin and the fentanyl to other family members. It's just a tragedy, and it's a, a, a very large problem for Summit County. And Summit County has been sort of on the front lines in Northeast Ohio, charging people when there are drug overdoses. Mm -hmm. And the criticism has always been, why are people criminally charged, the people who died voluntarily shot themselves up with drugs? The drugs are illegal and it's poison. So you need to be held accountable. Anytime in Summit County when you cause the death of another, we are going to look at it to see if someone can be held criminally responsible. So this is no different. If I give you something and I know it's going to kill you or highly likely to kill you, then criminally I can't be held responsible. And we screen these cases very care carefully. Um, since 2013, we've handled approximately 29 of these involuntary manslaughter cases with heroin. So we look at, is this person a user? Is this person a dealer? Did this person have a duty of care? Is this person a parent or a relative? We consider everything. Um, we go through a very arduous screening process. 
Um, but yes, if, if you're going to give somebody else your poison and you know it's going to kill them or likely to kill them, we are going to look at holding you criminally responsible. Margaret, the, can you speak at all to mom and grandmother in particular's history in the court system and how that has been dealt with? Uh, we know that moms have previous drug arrests. We know the grandmothers. I'm not prepared to address that at this time. Is involuntary manslaughter the most serious charge that you could charge in this case? It's a first degree felony and carries with it a possible incarceration of 3 to 11 years in prison. Can you talk a little bit about what led to these evidence tampering charges? There were efforts made to conceal um, the needles and the drugs, are my understanding. Is That's that correct. correct, Sheriff? That's correct. Things were, uh, things were not left completely in place as they were discovered by the family members before our deputies arrived. And what about the, the relation in this case with, with Mr. Callahan? What, what did, did he... Mr. Callahan... Uh, Apparently was taking up residence with uh, the uh, person identified as the grandmother. Um, okay. Would he so be classified as the dealer here, or is there a is there a is the provider of the heroin, or you know, is there? That's we're still finishing up our investigation on different aspects. Um, we definitely had enough to go forward uh, with the prosecutor's office uh, and briefing them and. Then what charges to go with at this point in time. So a question for the medical examiner. Um, Two-part question. Was Did it appear that Andrew had a prolonged history, for lack of a better term, of using intravenous drugs? And also I noticed yesterday in the report there was mention that he was a type 1 diabetic. Was that actually true or was that another effort to conceal evidence? As far as a type 1 diabetic issue, we've not had a chance to get medical records to support or negate that finding. As far as chronicity of use, there's nothing obvious on the examination right now that indicates chronicity. There was definitely recent needle punctures. And we did address that with the medical examiner, with Dr. Kohler, uh, regarding um, what was in his system versus the uh, illness, if it is true, uh, of diabetes, etc. And her response actually was that. Uh, the, the drugs are an independent lethal mechanism. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Sure, really quick. Um, one more question. Um, there was some confusion, I think, in, uh, in some of the reports um, about who exactly was, was present uh, in this room while this was happening. Can you give us a little bit of explanation as to who exactly was, was there for the this? The reason that that was... Uh was because there was traffic in and out of that room at different times during the time that these people were there. Okay. I can tell you that at the time of our deputy's arrival, uh, the deceased, his mother and his mother's friend were present at the time of our deputy's arrival. However, preceding that, uh, there was other people. How, how, how much time had they spent at the uh, motel? Uh, I believe they arrived at approximately somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 o'clock in the morning. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Um, they were in and out. Once again, there was traffic in and out of this room over the next uh, approximately six hours. Um, well, four to six hours. Um, with them being in the room, but apparently uh, in a very sound sleep um, for several hours after that time and then waking up and discovering. That you, said, they, you said Tuesday, uh, Wednesday? Tuesday night into Wednesday, Wednesday morning, night. and then they went to sleep Wednesday morning early in the morning, uh, waking uh, Wednesday in the evening when they discovered him uh, deceased. I guess what I'm asking is, uh, can you confirm that the grandmother was, was present in this room at some She was point? not present at the time of our deputy's arrival. Okay. I can tell you that uh, our evidence, and we have reason to believe that it, she was in the room okay. at some point. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really, that's about all we have, folks. Thank you. You're seeing much. more and more of this activity at Hotels like that, especially you know along the highways and easy access and sort of setting up a party room. Um, anytime you have hotels located, which a lot are located in a corridor area between two major cities such as Keene and Akron, and they're close to an interstate, things of this nature, it's obviously uh, you know an easy access for people to do good and bad as well. And uh, it has no reflection on the hotel or motel itself. 
it's just an easy, accessible uh, place to conduct business. Do you, Thank you. Do you anticipate more convictions and charges like these in the future? With the problems with addiction in our uh, nationwide, uh, would certainly wouldn't surprise us, sadly. Thank you.